Good day and thanks for joining us. As we are unfortunately unable to meet in person this year, we are pleased to be able to take this opportunity to share some of the innovative new things that have been going on at Sigma Tech throughout the past 12 months in this format. Our hard and software teams have been hard at work to ensure that Sigma Tech remains at the forefront of our field. For the first time this year, Sigma Tech is offering frequency inverters. Our brand new range of frequency inverters is called the FTD3000 series. The FTD3000 devices come in nine sizes, starting at 370 watts and going up all the way to 132 kilowatts. As is normal with all our servo drives as well, safety is included on every device. That means that this device and anyone in this range um, has a safety rating of SIL level 3, performance level E, and incorporates a safe talk off function, bringing the asynchronous motor to a safe stop if anything should go wrong during the operation of the machine. Field buses supported um, in this FTD3000 range is CanOpen, Varan, and Ethercat, meaning that the drive can be used quite comfortably alongside any CPU that we offer. Parameterization is done right from within our integrated engineering tool called LaSalle, just as all our servo drives are, and all of the parameter files are stored directly on the CPU, meaning that if a unit were to fail in the field, it would simply be a case of replacing the unit and no reparameterization or SD card swapping or anything of the like is required. For a long time now, Sigmatic has been offering some very high performance uh, servo drives in the form of our MDD and SDD series. We are proud to announce that we are expanding our MDD series with the brand new MDD 2000 range drives. These drives um, now incorporate all of the newest features, including, for example, the HIPAA phase DSL encoder protocol, meaning that you can now connect a motor over a single cable to the drive. Furthermore, all of the benefits from our previous series are there, and to tell you a bit more about that, I will meet you over there at the MDD stand. The MDD 2000 drive series has a very high power density factor. In this small form factor, we have a total of 6 axes and 4 kilowatts of power. The series comes in three different sizes, size 1, 2 and 3, um, where we have 4 kilowatts of power over here, 9 and 18 kilowatts of power. The overload rating on all of these drives is up to 300%, meaning that at the smallest form factor, we have a standard current, a continuous current of 5 amps per axis and a peak current of 15 amps per axis. The series is divided into MDP and MDD units, where the MDP unit is basically the head unit which contains the power supply, the braking resistor, the communication interfaces and everything needed for standard operation, plus three axes. This can then be expanded with an MDD unit, which is an axis expansion unit, which adds another three axes to this um, set, making it a total of six axes. When placing these, these units next to each other, um, they can be connected using these connection blocks. Up here, we have the communication bus connection block, which is easily plugged in and out like so. And likewise, down here, we can extend the DC bus to the next units that are attached to this using the DC bus connection blocks. We really see a future where all axes are assumed to be inherently safe. Therefore, keeping with our Sigmatic philosophy of inc um, including safety in all our drives, we have again incorporated all safety features into all drives of this series. That means that all of these drives have a safety rating of SIL Level 3, Performance Level E, Category 4. They inc also incorporate all of the expected safety features on drives nowadays, such as safety over the Varan bus, eliminating the need for extra wiring, as well as safe torque off, safe stop one, um, safe operating stop, and so forth. Everything we might need. Feedback is also a new um, feature on this drive, or shall we say there is a new feature in the lines of feedback on this drive, and that is that these drives now support HIPAA-face DSL. The HIPAA-Face DSL protocol allow us to con communicate with a motor or to connect a motor to the drive using a single cable. 
therefore eliminating a lot of wiring on these units and neating up, neatening up the cabinet. However, as we do not want to force our partners to immediately change mechanically as well, we've also incorporated a universal encoder um, interface. Over this universal encoder interface, a lot of the standard encoder interfaces are supported. Things like the NDATS, Resolver, Normal Hyperface, SynCos, TTL, and so forth. Setup is done again in our integrated engineering tool called LaSalle and parameter, uh, parameterization is achieved either manually or by using the new auto-tune feature. Uh, parameters are again stored on the CPU, meaning that if one of the units were to fail in the field, it's a simple case of replacing the unit, no reparameterization or SD card swapping required. For the first release, we'll, we will be offering the drives in the following configuration with three axes in size one, three axes in size two, and a single axis in size three. That means at a overload um, rating of 300%, size three delivers 30 amps continuous and up to 90 amps peak current, which is a lot of power. Uh, later on, the series will be expanded to include one, two, and three axes in all sizes. In our ever-growing family of SDS products, you can really see that SigmaTec stands for High Performance Control Systems. Uh, we now offer CPUs in our SDS system uh, based both on ARM and x86 technologies with single as well as dual-core processor units. We've also recently expanded the CPU series with a EtherCAD drive controller meaning that it is now possible to uh, control EtherCAD drives using the CP733 or the CP313. You can really see the amount of cards that have been developed for the SDS system up to this point. I mean, all of the cards on this board are unique, which is really impressive. Another interesting card is, for example, the DC061 or 062. These two sort of go together. That is a fully integrated servo drive in this form factor in 12 and a half millimeters of width. At a uh, continuous current of six amps, this card provides just shy of 300 watts of power. Fully integrated servo with uh, feedback incorporated as well as safety, of course. Um, speaking of safety, these yellow cards down here are part of our safety system. Now, the safety system in the SDS range is designed to be a standalone system, but to incorporate with the rest of the SDS products just as well. That means that you can take one of these safe CPUs and freely program it uh, to have a standalone application, or you can take these cards and attach them in a standard SDS range like up here. When you do so, the uh, safety functionalities and IOs are accessible from the standard application just as if there were no separation between the two systems. So you have the free, uh, free programmability in the safety system as well as of course in the standard CPU um, and it is as if there is no separation. Now, in the last year, there's been some exciting new developments in our safety system and to tell you more about them, I will meet you over at the safety stand. An exciting new feature that has recently been added to the safety system is the safety hot swap feature. Using this feature, it is possible to remove a separate piece of the safety system um, whilst the system is running. So meaning if you have, say, for example, a machine with multiple intake stations and you want to remove one of these stations without having to stop the machine, this is now possible. Over here, we have our multi-touch operating panels to give your machine a modern look. Uh, these panels have a IP rating of IP65 for the front and also have a metal side, meaning that if a bump were to come from the side, the glass doesn't shatter. Uh, the sizes available start from a resolution of just over 720p's at a size of 10.1 uh, inches and uh, goes up to a size of 21.5 inches at a full HD display resolution. The system is also designed to be modular so that you can choose any size panel and pair it with any CPU unit. I'll show you the CPU units as well as the remote display options on the next end. Over here, we have the panel interface modules that 
attached to the back of the multi-touch operating displays that I just showed you. These are fixed to the display in the factory already, so they are delivered as one product. And you can select these based on the amount of power required for your application. Most HMI applications would be more than sufficiently covered with an ARM CPU. If you do have a more powerful application, you could go for an x86 CPU. If you have an application where you require an IPC-based device, you can use the HMI Link technology, which allows you to run over 100 meters at full HD quality with USB and power also included. Over here we have a display showing the vast range of displays that we have on offer. Um, these start from really small 3.5 inch displays, 4 inch displays and go up all the way here to a 23.8 inch display. Uh, some of these displays connect over CAN and some of them, or most of them rather, have their own CPUs attached. Another nice feature that we also integrate into some displays and also have as a separate device is the RFID reader. So this means you can simply take an RFID card, hold it against the RFID reader or the display and the user is logged into the machine. Over here we have an overview of the Industry 4.0 and Smart Factory products that we have on offer. Um, these start from simple remote IOs to IP67 rate, remote, rated remote IOs, uh, safety remote IOs, wireless operating panels, remote connectivity and the likes. This wireless um, operating panel is quite interesting. It offers safety to go um, in that the safety connection is done over wireless. Um, the panel is fully safety integrated to SIL level 3, performance level E, um, and is offered in both a portrait as well as a landscape format. The remote connectivity and cloud services provided by Sigmatic now spans both sides. Um, that would be the side of remote support and online for, uh, connections, and then also cloud logging, so connections to the cloud. Looking at the remote support options, we have this RAR model, which is our remote access model. Um, these modules connect to the internet and allow you to create a VPN connection to the local machine from the outside. Uh, the connectivity to the internet is established over either Ethernet, Wi-Fi, uh, 4G LTE or a combination and with a preference of the above. Um, and it then allows a web-based or a website to be loaded which lists out all the machines linked to your account. You can simply click on a machine and you have a live VPN connection to this machine. This now means that you can service the machine as if you were right there. Uh, meaning you can download software onto it, debug it, and just control it as if you were there in person. On this cloud side of things, um, all of the CPUs support the open and well-known protocols like OPC UA and MQTT, and all have the ability to directly communicate to the cloud, Azure or AWS or whatever cloud service it is that you use. Um, this way, data can be pushed up into the cloud and also control packets can flow down. Um, we also offer a data collector um, PC, which can act as an edge device, meaning it sits on the edge of the network, collects all of the data from the local devices in the network, um, filters it out and passes high quality data into the cloud, therewith reducing the amount of packets that flow into the cloud and therewith the monthly or running cost of such a cloud system. Over here, we have our energy monitoring modules. These modules can be used to monitor the energy usage of machines or different parts of machines and can be put into place in, say, for example, a system where you want to perform predictive maintenance. Um, it can, say, a practical um, example might be the monitoring of the current usage of an axis. Uh, before the axis actually has a problem, the usage of the current might go up meaning the axis gets warmer or the motor gets warmer and therefore um, a breakdown occurs. If you could notice this before the breakdown occurs, you can stop the problem. Here we have seen that we really have all the solutions for the vertical connection from the cloud to the machine and as well as the horizontal communication from machine to machine in the factory. We hope there was something interesting for you here today and hope to see us again soon.